John, welcome back. But Father Rich Pagano from St. John Paul II in Nocatee, Florida, in Ponte Vedra. And we are starting a 44-day preparation. Today, on the Solemnity of St. Joseph, we begin our first day. And it's my hope as a pastor to lead our community in this devotion so that we may consecrate our efforts through St. Joseph to Jesus as we build out our beautiful campus. We have so much responsibility on our hands to continue to culture our Catholic faith in this beautiful environment. And that also includes you, to our brothers and sisters that connect with us each and every week online. Um, my hope is that every day for the next 44 days, we're going to do this devotion together. If you haven't had a chance to pick this book up, it's called Consecration to Jesus Through St. Joseph, An Integrated Look at the Holy Family. Dr. Gregory Bataro and Jennifer Settle put together this incredible resource, and each and every day you'll have a little devotional reading followed by journaling. And journaling is such a great accompaniment to the spiritual life. So I hope that you take advantage and go online and search for this book. It is in the description link below, so you can copy and paste that into a Google search to get this book. I bought mine on Amazon, and I'm so glad that I have it. What a unique consecration, like literally starting on the Solemnity of St. Joseph, which is the highest solemnity to honor the foster father of Jesus or the earthly father of Jesus, and then finishing on St. Joseph the Worker, which will actually be my second anniversary being here. In the introduction, there's some beautiful uh, words and, and that I'd like to share with you before we open up to the first day. In the introduction, it says, we need help. Our culture has been on a path of self-destruction for decades. And despite the warnings of many modern day prophets and the trajectory has not changed. Our hope, of course, is in the Lord who made heaven and earth and is with us until the end. However, these events unfold in a mysterious way in the context of history, and we are given powerful intercession and aid as a part of the arrangement. God is still with his church, and we as Catholics have the most rich, diverse culture in the whole world. And it's time to regain our culture, take up the banners of faith, and fly them very, very proudly. And I hope that you would join me in that effort here at St. John Paul II, whether you're connecting from afar just digitally or locally, how to use this devotional. It is suggested to pick a feast day that is meaningful to you or whichever one is more than 44 days away and count back there from 44 days, six weeks and two days, not at specific dates are listed since some feasts fall on different days each year, but you can easily count six weeks and two days back from the next feast day that you want to end on to make your consecration. This consecration is specifically unique because it does start on the solemnity of St. Joseph and ends on St. Joseph the worker. It also says here, it will be even more effective for you if you do this with someone else. Find someone else you are close to who will journey through this with you. Someone you can share your responses with as well as your highs and lows throughout the 44 days. There's a Facebook group called St. Joseph Consecration for everyone going through the preparation. We often repeat the devotion as a group with emailed reflections as well. Make this a regular part of your life and share it with others. For us, we're going to be hosting this on our YouTube channel. So right where you are right now, every day for the next 44 days, we are going to do this devotion together. And also parishioners have been purchasing this book. All the parish council members, those chairs, the finance council, as well as the building committee have this book in hand. And we're starting today with day one. So let's go there. And I will read this to you. Again, if you haven't picked up the book yet, pick it up. And if not, you can uh, go through this each and every day with us for the next 44 days. And you should journal on your own as well. The ultimate fulfillment of our life is union with God. We are made in God's image where we come from. And we are made for union with him, our fulfillment. As St. Augustine says, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. What is it then for our hearts to rest in God? It is our ultimate fulfillment. It is what we are made for, and we are ultimately unsatisfied and unhappy without it. All human suffering and discontent can be summed up as an experience of not being in union with God. The cure for all human suffering and disconnect, discontent is union with God. 
Therefore, it stands to reason that union with God should be the only principal goal we pursue. We know that because of original sin, we lost the inheritance of union with God, but then Christ's resurrection restored us to that inheritance. Jesus is the way. Through him, with him, and in him, we can attain our ultimate fulfillment of union with God. Our adopted sonship of the Father occurs through our union with Christ. This is everything. We enter into union with Christ through our baptism. This sacrament initiates us into the greatest mystery of our human experience. In baptism, we are united to Christ and receive all that is his. The end of this gift is union with the Father as Christ is one with the Father. This is a process through, and we th- this is a process though, and we don't get there all at once. The journey towards union with God is the story of our own human development. God initiates and invites us into this journey and then accompanies us along the way and provides everything that we need to keep going. Through Christ, he unites to our humanity and our humanity can return to him through Christ. This means we enter fully into God through the door of the humanity of Christ. We draw our attention to the humanity of Christ to understand ourselves. We cannot hope to develop our humanity in some way differently than Christ developed his. And so we humble ourselves to accept the shocking mystery of God's humility in his incarnation. God was a helpless baby and developed into the perfection of his humanity by means of a mother and father in the poor and humble circumstances of Nazareth. And here's a reflection question. So after that instruction, then there's a reflection question. And then there's a section for you to journal, as you can see here. As you noticed, I've been highlighting the words that stand out to me. So I would encourage you to do the same. And even as you participate in these videos each and every day, if you if you aren't uh, following along in text, to write down things that, wow, that, that stood out to me. Let me write that down. And then to begin to reflect on it and journal it. Here's the reflection question for the first day of this consecration. Who do you really see yourself as? If you were the child of a rich president or a celebrity superstar, you would probably carry yourself with an attitude of being untouchable, like nothing could ever bother you. You'd live without a worry because you would know that everything will be taken care of for you. Who is your actual father? What kind of disposition should you walk around with? How does this compare to the disposition that you typically carry yourself with in your day-to-day emotional life? I'd like to reemphasize that first question. And I think it's a worthy question. Who do you really see yourself as? Thinking about yourself, like, who, how do you look at yourself? You know, for, for years, I looked at myself and I relied on my masculinity in the world and the way that the world presented masculinity is, well, I have to be a really strong athlete. I have to be uh, likable and attractive to girls. I have to have money in my pocket. And then all of the things that money can get. And that's how I'm going to present myself. That's who I am. You know, and I thought it would be if I'm wealthy, if I'm attractive, and if I'm strong. You know, but our masculinity or our identity as children of God, as men and women, it can't be just in that, right? And I, and I came to realize that. What an empty pursuit. I was searching and chasing after all of these things, like in the book of Ecclesiastes, like I was chasing after wind. You know, when I, when I reflect on, on who I am, you know, I, I just started going through the deepest levels of my heart. And initially, I have to tell you, like, I really, I really started to initially think about my own sins. Like, well, I, I'm not perfect. I'm not, I'm not good. I, you know, I could do more. That we can be inclined to that all the time. But St. John Paul II, our patron, expresses, don't let sin define you. You are defined by a God who loves you, who has made you worthy 
And he has given you so many gifts. And in the sense of St. Catherine of Siena's view of this, if you are, if you become who you were created to be, you would set the world on fire. Each of you have incredible, unique gifts by God's handiwork. And each of you are worthy. And I hope that as you meditate and you think about who you are in light of Christ, he'll begin to touch your heart and reunite you and, and unite you to the Father. So I, I kind of wrote down some of these things. First and foremost, I see myself as a priest of Jesus Christ, a partner in ministry with St. John Paul II, a son of a sanitation worker from Hell's Kitchen, a birth son of a broken heart. I am a companion on the journey for the wayward. I am an adopted son of Mary and Joseph and the grandson of St. Anne. I'm an Italian, Irish, American man who is passionate and loving. I am a missionary of mercy, a disciple of St. Faustina, under the protective guidance of St. Rita, spurred on by the blood of the martyrs, St. Ignatius of Antioch and Maria of Goretti, St. Valentine, my confirmation name, with the joy of Nicholas of Bari, St. Nicholas of Mira, Visionary, dreamer, healer, compassionate witness to the sufferings of Christ in our humanity. This was such an excellent exercise. And I really find so much rest. And this is just day one. Before I let you go, I just want to share just a couple of points from the instruction that I highlighted. We enter fully into God through the door of the humanity of Christ. What does that mean? Well, when I look at the beginning of this reflection, all human suffering and discontent can be summed up as an experience of not being in union with God. But what I love about God is that he sent Jesus into the world and he suffered. As you can see over my, over my shoulder, the cross. And, and why does God suffer in such a way in Jesus Christ? Why is God revealing to us the incarnation? Why would God humble himself, like it says in here, to such an extent to come to be with us? And, and ultimately, it's for God to reach down into our own suffering and through the doorway of his humanity, we can have communion. And now what separates us from God is now what brings about a greater unity. God was a helpless baby and developed into the perfection of his humanity. We can, we can think like Jesus, you know, learned obedience through what he suffered, right? Jesus develops and that's an important point. Jesus develops in his humanity. Jesus learned through obedience by what he suffered. Well, we too, like we have to, we have to expect that our suffering is just a mere occasion for greater union with Christ. And no matter what we are suffering, it's just that next catalyst for our deeper fellowship with him who is purifying our humanity. But we have to enter in through that doorway. So as we conclude this time together, I'd like to conclude each of, of these 44-day uh, exercises with the prayer of Pope Leo the Thirteenth, And you can access that online. Uh, Father Calloway also produces these from the Marians of the Immaculate Conception, the, Asso the Association of Marian Helpers. So you can access these online. It has a litany of St. Joseph, which I love, but this is most clearly my favorite prayer. And we're in the, we're in the year of St. Joseph, and this is the official prayer of the whole year. And my hope is that praying together, my brothers and sisters, like we can move through this 44 day consecration and really enter into the responsibility of what we have as Catholics to advance the church in the modern world. 
We here at St. John Paul II have a wonderful entrustment from Bishop Estevez, from Holy Mother Church, to advance the gospel into this new generation. And I need your help. And first and foremost, it has to be done in prayer. It has to be done in prayer. And joining our hearts together, I couldn't think of a, a greater way to participate. So before we pray, I just want to say hello to Margaret. Uh, thank you so much for, for praying with me as we shoot this live. Dennis, how are you doing? Great to see you. And Missy, thank you for commenting on, on our feed. If you feel like, you know, throwing in your jur own journal entries in the comment section below and just sharing what spoke to you from this first day of consecration. And as we go on to share that, we can have a little bit of fellowship digitally. And I hope that you would feel open and comfortable to share that. So let's uh, let's conclude with our prayer of Pope Leo the Thirteenth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, O blessed Joseph, we have recourse in our affliction, and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we now, with hearts filled with confidence, earnestly beg you to take us under your protection through that sacred bond of charity which united you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God. And by that fatherly love with which you embrace the child Jesus, we humbly beg you to look graciously upon the beloved inheritance which Jesus Christ purchased by his blood and to aid us in our necessities with your power and your strength. Defend, O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, the chosen children of Jesus Christ. Keep from us, O most loving Father, all blight of error and corruption. Aid us from on high, most valiant defender in this conflict with the powers of darkness. And just as you once saved the child Jesus from mortal danger, so now defend God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield us by your constant protection so that supported by your example and strengthened by your help, we may be able to live a virtuous life, die a happy death, and obtain everlasting bliss in heaven. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I hope that you enjoyed participating in this first day of consecration as we continue to produce these each and every day. The videos will get a lot shorter, so it'll just be a, it will do the, the day's reflection and uh, answer some of those questions, and I'll do a little sharing, and then we'll, we'll move on throughout our day. But again, want to encourage you, pick up the book, pick up the Prayer of St. Leo. You can access those online, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless, peace, and happy solemnity of St. Joseph the guardian of the universal church, the guardian of the human family, the terror of all demons, and a great worker and carpenter that I hope will build out this beautiful community with us here at St. John Paul II. God bless.